Hi there. In today's video, I'll cover how to program a Yesu FT65 with the Chirp and RT system software. As mentioned in a previous video, the VX6R is my main HT, but the FT65 is one of my backup radios along with my FT60. I have to say the only thing I dislike about the FT65 is it doesn't have the option to charge using a USB cable like the FT60 and VX6R do. Unfortunately, there's also not an option to purchase an aftermarket battery with a charging port like the, say, UV5R. Uh, this particular radio, you have to charge it in its charging cradle. Uh, to give you an example, so this is, this is an aftermarket battery for a UV5R, and it is an extended battery, so when you connect it, it does make the radio a little bit, a little bit longer. But on the side, there's a, there's a port to charge the battery. Aside from that one issue, I really like the FT65, and it definitely has a place in my comms go bag. Along with the FT60, it serves a dual purpose as both a backup HT and spare radio in case a friend or family member needed one. Like the VX6R and FT60, this radio is pretty rugged, and it's rated for dust and water protection. It has three power settings for 5 watts, 2.5 watts, and 0 0.5 watts. The stock lithium-ion battery is rated at uh, 1950 uh, milliamp hours, which is capable of over 9 hours of operation. Since I'm unable to charge this HT in the field with a USB charger, I opted for an optional high-capacity uh, lithium-ion battery that is uh, 2,500 uh, milliamp hours that is capable of over 11 and a half hours of operating time. If you're looking to upgrade from a Bofeng UV5R for under $100 and don't want to spend the $150 for what the FT60 costs on average, then the FT65 is a good alternative. That is, of course, as long as you can live without being able to charge it with a uh, USB cable. So now we'll walk through the programming process with Chirp. I have the software up, the radio is plugged into my computer with a programming cable I sourced from Amazon. The process for downloading and uploading data to the FT65 is easier in both Chirp and the R2 system software compared to that of the FT60 or the VX6R, where on those radios you had to hold down certain keys on the HT's keypad in order for it to communicate with the software. You don't have to do that with the FT65. The process for programming this radio with Chirp I would say is similar to programming a Bofeng UV5R. However, there are a couple of extra steps I noticed when programming this radio, and I'll explain the process first and then demo it in a moment, but I wanted to highlight a couple of notifications you'll encounter. But to start, you'll power the radio on. From the chirp menu, you will click on radio and then click download from radio. A window will pop up where you can select the COM port, radio, brand, and model. Once you select the information from the drop-down menu, you'll click OK. However, before you can proceed with downloading from the radio, a couple of notif notifications will pop up. The first is a notification that states this radio's driver is experimental, and it will ask you if you want to proceed. In the details section of the notification, it states it was tested only by the developer and only on a single radio, and it will state proceed at your own risk. Once you click yes to proceed, a second notification appears. This window provides instructions uh, to connect the programming cable to the mic jack and then tells you to click OK. After you click OK, you'll see the progress bar on the computer screen and TX will be displayed on the HT. 
The notification stating that the driver is experimental is the first time I've run into that with Chirp. And I don't know how common it is with other brands or models. I don't know if that notification will continue to appear on future releases of Chirp. I suspect it's probably a matter of um, if they do additional testing and if additional development work is involved. But I will uh, I'll show the process right now. So I'm going to turn the radio on. And in the menu, I'll go to radio, download from radio, the window for selecting the COM port model and uh, brand will pop up and I'll click OK. And then here's the notification telling me that the driver is exper experimental and it will ask me if I want to proceed and I will click yes. Here's the notification giving me instructions to connect the programming cable to the mic jack and press OK and then I'll select OK. And now we see the progress bar letting me know that data is being transferred from the radio to the software and on the radio I see TX on the display. And then to upload to the radio, again, you'll go to menu, click radio, and this time you'll select upload to radio. And we'll go through a similar uh, process, so I'll show you that now. I'll go to radio, upload to radio, I'll click OK on the pop-up. A set of instructions will appear, I'll click OK. The notification letting me know that the driver's experimental will appear. I'll click yes to proceed. And then I'll see the status bar letting me know that the data is being transferred from the software to the radio and I see TX, or I'm sorry, RX displayed on the HT. So despite the notification stating the driver is experimental, there don't seem to be any issues downloading and uploading data to the HT, and it does appear to function as expected. However, when modifying the code plug in Chirp, I noticed some different behavior that I did not expect. For instance, when deleting a specific line, the name will remain after deletion, and I had to manually delete the name of the, the channel. So, you know, like here, if it says SIM2, I had to manually delete this, and then um, once I deleted the name, Chirp would auto-populate a frequency, and then I would have to go back in and delete the frequency, and that is the only oddity I noticed, and considering the software is free, it's not that big of an issue to have to live with. Uh, for reference, the Chirp version I'm currently demoing is 2022 1109 installer and again I'm not sure if future versions will include that warning message and um, I would assume that would be based on additional testing. Now I'll demo the process for programming the FT65 with RT systems. I have the software up and the radio is connected to my computer with a programming cable. Downloading from the radio is easy with the software and is similar to the process you just saw with Chirp, with the exception that you won't encounter the experimental driver notification. So I will power the radio on. From the menu, I'll click Communications, Get Data from Radio, and an instruction window will pop up as demoed in the previous videos for the software. Click OK and the process for transferring data from the radio begins. The process to upload data to the radio is the same as downloading. You go to menu, click communications, send data to radio, click OK, and the transfer process begins. And so you can see my generic frequencies that are programmed in. So I'll Go to Communications, send data to radio this time, click OK, and I see the progress bar 
and the HT is displaying RX. I know the R2 Systems software compared to Chirp is an investment because you have to purchase the software and programming cable where Chirp is a free open source software. But I really do like how the software displays the instructions when downloading and uploading to the radio. It also enables you to configure more back-end functionality of the radio compared to Chirp. I think for those reasons and the ease of using the software justify the price. Of course, that's not intended to be disparaging to Chirp. Their software is great, and I will continue to use it for my other radios. But for my Yaesu HTs, I do prefer to use RT systems. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.